So now that I've found a comfortable place to sit and I've done a couple of warm up sketches, I want to talk to you just a little bit about how you should use your everyday experiences to help you improve your watercolor painting. One of my favorite things about watercolor in particular is that it's so portable. I've already showed you how to make a really small portable watercolor palette and you can have just a little tiny watercolor sketchbook and you can just take these things everywhere with you. It is so much easier to haul around a little bit of watercolor than it is to haul around say oil paint or acrylic because it doesn't require any kind of special cleanup materials, there's no special brushes, and it's easy to find really small watercolor sketchbooks. So I think it's just a really great opportunity to be able to take this medium everywhere with you and really get some brush mileage in. And that is going to ultimately be the key factor in improving your watercolor skills. So as I said, I found a comfortable place to sit here at the park and I'm just doing a little bit of sketching. And I think it's really easy for us to begin feeling like maybe what's around us every day isn't worth painting. And if you spend time on social media, for example, Instagram, and you see all these people going out painting outdoors and plein air, and they're painting like mountains, majestic rivers, beaches, the ocean, and maybe you're like me and you live in basically the middle of nowhere. I live in Nebraska, and sometimes it can feel a little bit like we don't have all these grand things around us to sketch. And if you think about most people's experience, that is the case for almost all of us. And even people who are fortunate enough to live around mountains and big national parks, it's not like it's super easy to get out every day and make a whole day of painting to bring out all of your equipment to maybe drive at least an hour to pay any entrance fees to somewhere that you might want to paint. It's just not realistic to be able to paint something grand every day. And so I think it's really important to begin looking around you at the ordinary and it may not necessarily inspire you to paint. However, it's really, really important to take the time to paint the ordinary. And there's just so many reasons for that. But I would say that the biggest reason that you should get out and paint things, even things that do not necessarily inspire you, is that when you eventually are in that situation where maybe you're in some amazing place and you're inspired to paint, you're going to take all your stuff out and you might feel very disappointed because you haven't really exercised your skills in observation and doing on-the-spot painting. It's a lot different than painting in your studio or painting from a photograph. So if you have any aspirations of that, of you know traveling maybe or just being able to spend a whole day painting somewhere that's really majestic and picturesque, I would say that you really do need to prioritize improving your skills of observation and doing really quick paintings because it's going to help you in those situations to really make the most out of those opportunities. So that is what I try to do. I Again, I just bring out my little tiny sketchbook. The first couple of sketches that I sit down to do, I almost always do not like them. And sometimes I'm a little bit out of practice and that's, you know, just a really good case for painting every day for at least 15 minutes is that you won't get out of practice. But even if you do get out of practice, it's okay. Just tell yourself, you know, I'm going to sit down, I'm going to paint. These paintings don't have to turn out to be anything amazing. So I did my warm up sketches and it's not like I tell myself in my head, okay, these are my warm up sketches and they're probably not going to work out. I do approach every sketch fairly seriously. However, if I find out during the process that, oh, 
This is a warm up sketch because it's not quite going the way that I want. And then I start observing some of the things that I know that I need to address and change. So by the time I got to this sketch, I was pretty well warmed up and I was approaching the process just a little bit more methodically. And I decided to paint a tree just right across the way from me. And I really liked the way that it was just reflecting in the water. And I wanted to take advantage of the format of my sketchbook and do kind of a vertical spread. This isn't something that I do very often, but I want to do more of because it's such a challenging format to paint either a very extreme panorama scene where it's horizontal or the inverse where you're doing that, but it's vertical. I actually think that that's even a little bit more challenging, but I thought this was a great opportunity to just kind of experiment with that format. And I also wanted to experiment with reflections. So a lot of times we're very intimidated by painting a reflection because we think that we have to paint that reflected item basically upside down, but otherwise identical to the object that is being reflected in the water. But that's just not the case. And you're going to see as I progress through this sketchbook, how I approach this very experimentally. And it is very important to approach your sketching and your painting in general with a very experimental mindset. Of course, I'm keeping the fundamentals in mind at all times in which I am looking for the lightest and brightest colors, and that's what I'm painting first. So you saw that I started out with just lots of splashes of yellow all over the place, and I'm going to slowly build up to my darker values. I'm going to start building up to my neutrals. And that's just another amazing thing about painting, in my opinion anyway, is that a lot of times, especially with watercolor, we're just going to be able to naturally make that progression because when we start out and our palette is clean, well, if you're like me and you like to have a clean palette, some people don't, but anyway, if you like to start out with a clean palette, you're just automatically going to start out with your lightest and brightest colors because there's nothing else on your palette for it to mix with. But as I progress through this painting and I'm just adding more colors into the mix, I'm naturally going to get colors that are more dark and more muted or neutral. And so again, just keep your eye on the basics. Start out with your lightest and brightest colors, your lightest values. Slowly work into your darker values, your more neutral or muted colors. And same with edges. Start out with some nice soft edges. It can be a little bit more challenging to control your edges when you're painting on the go, especially if you are using a water brush like I am, because the water brush it basically is going to stay wet the whole time that you're painting because the water is continuously flowing from the reservoir and the handle into the bristles. So it's pretty difficult to get any kind of dry brush technique going with this. And likewise, because this sketchbook is not a 100% cotton paper, I'm not going to be able to get quite the soft edges that I might otherwise with really good paper. And also it's going to depend on the atmosphere. Fortunately, this was not a super dry day. And so my water on the paper didn't evaporate and dry up super fast, but that can always be an issue as well. And these, again, these are things that you are training for. You know, when you are on location and you want to do a painting and you really want it to count, you don't want to be dealing with those problems on the spot, not quite knowing how to work around them. But the more that you paint outdoors, from observation, on location, the more you're just going to naturally develop an intuition for those issues and be able to find your way to work around them. And back to this painting that I'm working on right now, you can see cl very clearly that I've spent most of my time painting the tree and not much time at all on the reflection. It's still basically in the stage of those light, bright colors, soft edges, and I've kind of left it alone. But I'm trying to keep that reflection very loose because I want to create a impression of water that's not completely still. And so this isn't going to be a perfect 
duplication of the tree reflected into the water. And you can see that I'm using my brush very differently, making all of my markings just a little bit looser. I am kind of, I guess for lack of a better word, just kind of squiggling my brush around and I'm allowing that to be very loose. And basically what I'm trying to capture are the colors and a little bit of the values reflected in the water, but I'm not trying to replicate every single stroke that I did on the actual tree. So you can see that this is just a really great way to experiment, loosening up, seeing things a little bit differently, and trusting in the process. And I think with watercolor, that's especially important for us to learn to trust in that process where we start out with our lightest and brightest colors, our soft edges, and then we build our darker values and our harder edges from that. And I really think that if you kind of keep those fundamentals at the forefront of your mind during the process, things are going to come together in the end. And as I've stated in my previous classes on watercolor for beginners, a lot of times the most challenging thing about watercolor is that it starts out very abstract. It starts out where maybe it doesn't feel like it has a really solid direction. It's not exactly like coloring in a coloring book page. So we have to build up from that abstraction and build the structure in. And so I think that it's very important to keep that process in mind and learn to trust that process to help you bring a composition together. And just trusting in that process alone is going to get you a really long ways. It's easy sometimes, I think, to forget that process, especially when we are on location and we're feeling a little bit rushed. And even if you're not feeling rushed, you are going to just automatically paint a lot faster when you are painting on location. I haven't quite figured out why that is, but I think it just has to do with being a little bit out of your element, out of your comfort zone. So you're just automatically going to work a little bit faster. And when you're working faster and there's a lot of information coming into your mind and you're trying to solve a lot of problems, it can be easy to let those fundamentals go by the wayside and kind of forget about those. And so it's really beneficial that when you sit down, you kind of keep those things in mind the entire time from the very beginning of the painting process because that alone is going to get you a long ways. But I do want to emphasize that it's certainly not about perfection. I would say actually in this sketchbook in particular, the vast majority of the pages that I've filled out, I these are not things that I would ever want to show anyone. So the sketchbook is really your opportunity for experimentation, for learning from mistakes. And those mistakes, as frustrating as they can be, those are what are going to really advance you in your pursuit of this medium and really any artistic medium. So when you're out on location, it's not just that you have to paint landscapes, you don't have to paint trees or, you know, sprawling panoramas. Sometimes it's really nice just to find a comfortable place to sit as I have here and just pick something up right around you. I didn't even go searching for this little leaf. It was actually already on this picnic table where I'm sitting and I decided, you know, that's good enough. Again, keep your mind very curious, keep your mind open and learn to explore the ordinary, learn to see beauty in the everyday things all around you. And it doesn't have to be the most vibrant fall leaf that's, you know, in perfect condition and it has all these amazing blends of color going on. This is just a leaf that was laying around and I decided to just take advantage of that. You know, maybe there's something interesting to find here and the process of deconstructing something very simple can be very therapeutic and enjoyable. So what I'm doing here, again, whether I'm painting a landscape or I'm doing a simple observational study like this, I'm going to start out with my lightest and brightest colors, lightest values, and I'm going to work up from there. And I'm going to try to see this object in that way. So when I'm observing it, I'm trying to look for the areas in the leaf that are very light, 
that I want to try to preserve and then areas that I should wait to address. So I'm not going to address the darkest areas right away. And you don't always have to do a background. It can be very nice, especially when you're doing a very simple observational painting of an object like this, maybe just to leave the background white. However, I sometimes just get impatient while I'm waiting for the paint on the object to dry. And so then I just kind of go ahead and put in a really loose background. Definitely not trying to mimic every detail or even the color of the actual background. Kind of let that be fun and let those colors just merge together. And then when that leaf is dry, then I can start going in with my darker colors and values and my harder edges to really bring some nice form to this object. And it doesn't need to be something that you try to do super realistically. It can just be a matter of wanting to explore the very subtle color in that object and maybe even exaggerating those colors a little bit. One of my favorite things about painting ordinary objects like this is that just by painting them, it makes that object a little bit special to you. So this leaf just laying around on this picnic table, nothing special about it, something that, you know, I wouldn't otherwise notice, no one would ever notice probably. And just by spending some time with it and observing it and finding all these subtle nuances of color and value, uh, looking at the way that the light hits it, the way that it casts a shadow, it just makes it feel a little bit more special. And as I said, this can be something that can be very therapeutic for you, especially if you're not feeling particularly creative in the moment. Just taking some time to observe something ordinary can help to kind of just ease up your mind into the creative process, I think. And painting ordinary things around you is also very nice and therapeutic because it becomes a document of what's going on in our lives at the moment. Because a lot of times little things in our world change with the seasons, change with the years. And so this can be something that you look back on later and it kind of conjures up those nice feelings of fall, especially if you're like me and fall is your favorite season. I like to flip back through my sketchbook and just kind of think about how fall felt that particular year. Maybe I'm looking at the sketchbook and it's already in the dead of winter. And, you know, it just becomes a very nice way to document your life and to look back at these sketches. Even if, you know, you do the sketch and it's not a great sketch, it's not your favorite thing in the world. Looking back, you're typically going to see these little sketches uh, with a lot more warmth than maybe you felt in the moment. Maybe you did get frustrated while you were doing the sketch in the moment, but I can almost guarantee that when you look back later, you may not think it's a great sketch, but you're still going to remember it as being kind of a special moment that you took time out of your life to do a little bit of observation. In this next sketch, I basically just turned my head a little bit and noticed that some people were on the bridge over in the distance and I decided not to sketch all of the people. There was a guy fishing and then uh, there was a woman just kind of sitting on the bridge and I could see her reflecting into the water and I really felt inspired by that just in that moment because while her image was reflecting in the water, I kind of imagined that maybe she was just reflecting on her life. And so I felt very inspired just in that moment to sketch her. Definitely was not something that I had planned to do. And that's going to happen a lot. And those opportunities don't come when you are not painting. So it's not always going to come. You're not always going to have a moment where something around you just happens to inspire you at the moment. Sometimes you're just going to go out and you're going to sketch just something very ordinary like a leaf or maybe the bark of a tree or something like that and then you'll go home. But there's going to be times where you're out sketching and something does strike you as being very special and you're going to want to capture that. And so that's exactly what I'm talking about with improving your 
painting skills, your watercolor skills, your skills of observation, because when those moments hit, you kind of want to be ready for them. And so all of the ordinary sketching, all of the sketching that is just kind of observational or, you know, things that are very ordinary and mundane, that's really the prep work for the special moments. And so I hope that you will take advantage of those ordinary moments because you have to see that that's what's going to help you create art that is really meaningful to you. Now, when I was working on this, of course, these are people. And so I had to expect that they would probably move or leave or change positions at least. And so I had to work very, very fast. So in this composition, color wasn't super important to me. I just kind of wanted to capture the mood. And I really exaggerated some of the fall colors just as a stand-in for not wanting to worry about color too much. And the most important thing here, just as I was talking about earlier when I was looking at ducks and talking about painting moving objects, it's really more important just to get a very quick impression of them because they are going to move. And so when I did my sketch, I basically just kind of scribbled in the figure of this person. I didn't make it detailed at all. I just wanted to kind of capture the gesture of her body sitting on this bridge, kind of looking over into the water, imagining, of course, that, you know, she's thinking about things going on in her life, reflecting on her life. And then just like I did with the tree a couple of minutes ago, I am just doing a very loose impression of her reflection into the water. I'm not trying to paint her upside down in the water. Just some squiggly little lines are going to give the impression of her reflection, and that is good enough. And, you know, I didn't know it at the time, but I was just warming up for this moment and was able to approach this little sketch with a lot more confidence than I would otherwise if I hadn't done any warm-ups and maybe this was right when I sat down to paint and I wanted to capture this moment I probably would have ended up feeling very frustrated with this sketch because I was still not really in the correct mindset for doing a painting like this so every chance that you get to sit down and do a sketch, whether it's something very ordinary, something mundane, maybe boring, nothing special, challenge yourself to find what is special about it and to do it because that is what is going to ultimately prepare you to do the paintings that you kind of idealize and that you really want to do or that might end up hanging on your wall or someone else's wall. And because I was filming these sketches for this class, I did sit at the park for probably about an hour. And during that hour, I did, I think, about six little sketches. Um, not all of them worth showing you, of course. But even on an ordinary day, I would just bring my sketchbook with me wherever I happen to go. As I said, it fits easily in my bag or my fanny pack, whatever I happen to be carrying with me. And I might spend just 10 minutes a day doing a really quick little sketch. It doesn't always have to be about sitting somewhere for an hour and doing a whole bunch of sketches. It can be very quick, very simple, and most importantly, relaxing. <laughs> 